I'm here at the World Creators Summit uh, with uh, Mitch Glazier, the Senior Executive Vice President of the RIAA. So hi Mitch and thanks for uh, joining me. It's been a very long day, I'm sure. It, it has been, but it's been a great day. Thank you for having me. Great. So first of all, let's delve straight into it. Uh, you know, uh, one of the big news of the RIAA of the last uh, couple of months is the fact that you revised uh, the way in which uh, you know gold and platinum discs are calculated, taking into account uh, streams from legitimate sources, of course. So, uh, how has that been uh, received uh, uh, in the wider world after you announced it? It's been it's been received very very well by both artists uh, and from digital services, who are the new delivery systems for what we create and they wanted to make sure that they were a part of the reward system and that they were a part of the marketing system that uh, we use for our artists so it was very very well received it took a while to figure out the methodology and to um, to reboot the program but like the rest of the industry I'm glad that our rewards program is you know been rebooted to reflect our new business models yeah sure and I guess the, the only uh, uh, Negative comments I've seen about it was the fact that Justin Bieber beat out uh, Elton John on the on the most decorated single in 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 the, in the history of, of the RAA. So that was a surprise result, I guess. It, you know, um, th their fans receive their music in different ways, and um, the good news is plenty of people still listen to Elton John uh, through streaming technology. But you know. It's a new world. Yeah, absolutely. It's a new world. And so, uh, talking about the way the RIA operates today, uh, you know, one of the the things that you've been quite vocal about recently is the fact that you're still responsible for sending uh, millions of takedown notices uh, to uh, technology services such as Google every week, uh, which uh, essentially is a drop in the bucket because uh, it doesn't make a huge amount of change because most of the links are reposted straight after or uh, re-uploaded by other sources. So uh, this of course is due to the DMCA and uh, there is there are a lot of calls. We, we just heard the uh, the congressman in the, in the conference uh, and the congresswoman in the conference room being uh, asked about whether the, there's going to be a, a, a revision of the DMCA to take into account the problems that have arisen from it. So do, how do you think this problem could be solved? Is there a way in which uh, technology uh, stakeholders can take more responsibility for the takedown process? I, I think that they can and they're doing some things we're we're inching forward, yeah. um, but um, search engines have started to take some actions to demote sites based on uh, DMCA notices, yeah. which might not take care of reposting or keeping it down, but it could take care of the uh, attractiveness or the relevance of the illegal site. Um, they need to do a better job. They need to make it a higher priority. Um, we did a report card on that new uh, action and so far um, it's not making much of a difference but it's a beginning and so I think Congress is going to be watching the intermediaries in the industries to see what we can work out together because we can move much faster than the law can be amended and if we can do it ourselves in a way that works for both sides uh, I think everybody will be better off if we can't I think Congress will get more involved yeah sure and uh, for the RIA it's, it's, it's sort of a uh, a, a new, more positive uh, sort of uh, era because, of course, you're past all the sort of negative uh, uh, sides uh, that have been, of course, uh, covered a lot and, uh, and rightly so. But uh, so, w what is uh, now the, the mission of the RIAA? What do you see as your main priorities as, organi uh, as an organization? I think our main priority is uh, protecting new revenue streams like streaming and licensing, making it easier so that people from, uh, you know, wedding videographers to app developers can go to a place that is much easier to use our music uh, in a manner that will benefit both of us. And it's not an easy process right now. We have a lot of work to do with our friends in the music community and with digital music services, but I'm thrilled that our attention is turned to um, rebooting the industry, protecting these new revenues. And it's going to be hard because new models also want to protect their um, uh, incumbency. Uh, and so uh, part of the problem that we face now are services uh, trying to lower royalty rates for new revenue streams or to make sure that they prevent new competitors from coming in and uh, finding a more innovative service and paying a higher royalty rate. Uh, and so we have to be mindful of 
all of our new revenue models and protecting those new models at the same time that we're trying to make licensing easier. Yeah, sure. And uh, I talked to uh, Mar Maria Palanta, the copyright register earlier, uh, and she also uh, went over some of the uh, reviews of copyright that they have in mind and, and how that uh, might be uh, structure and progress in, in, the, in the next, uh, in the next uh, couple of years, I guess. And so uh, what is your take on the, uh, the review? And, uh, you know, do you, do you think that there is uh, it, it is a right moment for uh, the technology industry and the you know the record industry to come together and actually instead of just throwing money at lobbyists to you know to get their points across they can actually try and find get minimum you know viable conversations between those those uh, different parties to get uh, to a new revised uh, uh, copyright system I think review is the right word and yeah. not reform uh, I think that the basic copyright rights that we have um, are effective, yeah. but I do think that it is the right time, especially within the music industry, for digital music services, publishers, and record companies, performers, and songwriters to come together to negotiate new ways of licensing and to, f to fix the licensing system in a way that's much more accessible for the 21st century. I don't know that ultimately it will require a change in the law, but if it does, then implementing something that we've agreed to uh, because the license that currently controls it was written in 1909, um, that will be much easier than, as you say, you know, giving money to lobbyists to try and advocate just your point of view, which would lead to no result at all. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time and uh, have a great rest of the conference.